Hello everyone, welcome to today's stream. Hopefully my sound is okay. Um, anyone listening want to do a little sound check, make sure I'm not blown out like I was before? I'm so nervous about my mic now after it's messed up a couple days in a row. So, redid my scene, so hopefully it's fine. Looking for a thumbs up somewhere? Anyone? Alright, well, I'm just going to assume it's good. I'm not seeing any red on OBS. Um, actually, let me switch some monitor inputs now that I'm thinking of it. Oh, falling out of my chair. That way I can see stuff better. All right, well, I'm just going to assume my mic is good. Um, so just a little bit on where we are, what we've been working on. Uh, we've done, I've been working on some pull requests for Xamarin Forms. I wanted to make sure fonts were a lot easier to use. One pull request is already in and submitted that lets us do automatic dynamic fonts for iOS. So it just magically starts working, which is great. Whenever you use a named font, your fonts auto scale. So that's beautiful. The other thing we're working on is the syntax for the XAML, for like when you're, or when you're referencing a font. When you're trying to do a custom font name, the syntax was different for each platform. And so we wanted to unify that so it just works the same everywhere. And on the last stream, I went through and cleaned up how I was doing that. So that way we have a parsing class that exists in shared code. And let's just jump over to some code and we can look at that a little bit. So on this last, this last commit, we created this new font file thing. Um, font file class and that deal we now parse everything out to where it needs to be which is great and now we can also now we can just parse this once we wrote some unit tests for it which are great to make sure that all of these all of these work and will produce something we can use what I did do is I finished iOS and iOS works great Android has a couple to do's Let's jump over to that. And then also we need to do UWP. Haven't even started on UWP for, I'm oh, sorry, the parsing stuff should work on Android and UWP. Since I moved the parsing over, I need to double check the UWP. I built it on, on Mac, couldn't compile it really, couldn't try it. So it's probably wrong, probably needs a little bit of work. So we'll need to check that out. And then the last thing we needed to get this pull request in was we changed it so you don't need to have your, um, your code, or sorry, your fonts inside the resources per app. They used to have to live inside the resource folder and on UWP they were inside of assets, fonts, they're still there, but we moved them to where they can load them now directly from the resources inside of your shared code. So now your fonts live in one place, not three or four or however many platforms you're targeting. So that's really, really exciting. Now that work is done on iOS, perfect. On Android, there's a to-do with how we're doing lookups. I don't like it. We're going to want to clean some of that up. And whatever we do for Android, we also need to do to UWP. UWP doesn't have any of this fancy loading yet, so we'll need to add that in there. Stuff's so good. <laughs> All right. So let's start looking at the Android. And I threw into the font stuff. Actually, I want to make sure it's still building. I downgraded everything to stable just to make sure everything works right. Start my music. Hopefully you listen to your own music so you don't just have to listen to me. I just don't want anything getting censored out and I just want to listen to what I want to listen to rather than only certain types of music. And then if you don't want to listen to music, you don't have to. It's kind of nice. Figure it's the most diplomatic approach. All right, so while that's building, let's go look into... Oh, sorry, I was playing with some simple auth stuff on that screen. Let's go look at, um, we're going into the platform Android. And inside of here, there's an extension. No, the extension lives in the renderers on this one. Keep getting them confused. It's not consistent. Ah, fonts extensions. So I have a to-do. Where's my to-do? Ah, right here. So right now, what we're doing is the registrar doesn't has fonts. We need, on iOS and Android, it both does something different. It will go and get the embedded resource, and then on iOS, we can just read that embedded resource out and use the bytes directly, which is really exciting and really nice. On Android, we didn't have that luxury we had to save it to a file, then load it from a file. UWP is gonna be the same thing, unfortunately. 
So what I have is this will go in and check the font. Let me so we have this in font this font loader. What we probably need to do with this has font, if it does true, we should return a location. On iOS, that's not going to return anything because it just doesn't have to. Whereas on iOS and Android, I mean on Android and UWP, we're going to need something. So we're probably going to have to change this thing around. And let's do... Uh, I wonder if we have one that says load font does true. I wonder if we add another one. I wonder if we need to do two calls or if we can do one that'll return a success and then also a file path. You know, let's just do it. Love the nice thing about these tuples is we can name them so we don't need a whole new class. This is going to break our build everywhere though. So let's find everything, find implementations. So on iOS, we're just going to do nothing because we don't need anything. I mean, I should probably just make that null. And actually, let me copy this just so it's consistent. Do that. One more L in there. Now, comma, null. Perfect. So now iOS will now continue to work. Let's go change our Android stuff because I like the idea of not having things weirdly hard coded. So this thing's going to lo load. People can decide what they want to do with it. But now we have this file path. Perfect. Okay, I like that a whole lot more. And now we'll do that, let me format code. We'll be able to do that on, just formatting some more code. Oh, my shortcut things, hold on. Let me move that up over here so you guys can see. Control I, it does the formatting on Mac, which is awesome. All right, platform, wait, which one did I just do? I could have sworn I just did this one. Oh, and I spelled success wrong. Should <laughs> fix that. Missing an S. Oh, there was two of them. Okay. So let's go fix the spelling everywhere. So that one's fixed. Okay, that one matches. This one matches. iOS is wrong. Let's go fix iOS. All right, everything is nice and pretty. Also, like always, if you have questions, ask them. I love interactivity. I love answering questions. It can be about what I'm working on now. It can be about other things. Actually, I want to set my topic. Um, topic, finalizing, let's do this. Finalizing, um, added fonts, pull request. That should be good enough. Send that out there so that way people know what we're working on, the topic updates. I need to build a bot. I need a bot that helps this helps make my streaming easier. So people want to ask what's going on, what I'm working on. All right, so now I can ditch this because, oh, I need to change where that's being used each where, everywhere too. It's going to be bad. All right. So... We'll just say result. Let me put that here. Now we can say if result dot success. Uh, maybe we should change that from not success dot has fault. We need to clean this thing up. So here we'll do the same thing. I'm going to change it. I like. Oops, wrong one. Eventually, we'll get this the way I like it. So we'll go to here, go to declaration. Let's go into this where it says, which one's this? 
I embedded font handler, font handler. Oh no, that makes sense for success. For has font, we'll change this to be bool has font string font path. Um, oh, and it can't because the names are different. Oh no, that'll go. Perfect. I like it. I like it. Um, also, if you don't like the way I'm doing things, please give me some better suggestions. There's got to be better ways than what I always do. Okay, so this is the iOS one. No, this is Android. Right? All right, let's fix Android now. So now that we have this equals, we can now ask if that font exists. And if it does exist, we'll get its path now. Has font. We can now ditch this and we'll just say result dot file path or font path. There we go. Much better. Now here dot has font do the same thing here. So much better. I'm happy with that. Fonts need to deconstruct it. Should we deconstruct it? I like that. That's clean. Nice suggestion, Visual Studio. I like that a lot more. All right, so we've got that. Android's now fixed. Now iOS is broke. Let's just build it. If we build it, it'll tell us to build it. It'll tell us where it's at. So we don't have to hunt for it. All right, here we go. So font registry, what's wrong? Unexpected character. Okay, I don't know what character it didn't like, but we'll just go with that. I'll say there's no way iOS could work because we changed things. Okay, throw that there. Perfect. Yeah, I know I'm not using that, but it's okay. Because then we'll say this guy. Perfect. iOS is now happy. Android's happy. And I like what we did there, so we'll just, let's make sure this works. We'll commit this, then we'll jump over and fix UWP. Wow, this might be a really short live stream. I thought some of this was going to take longer than it would. Unless people have questions or enhancements or things we should do to make it better. I think this is good. And our fonts are still working. Yay! Let's run Android. Oh uh, no, I don't want that one. That one's slow. Run this one. Well, that's... Oh, it's still got G Music running. <laughs> Didn't even shut it down yesterday. Okay, let that build. While that's going, let's jump over. This is my Windows machine, which is sitting next to me, remoted in. So, oh, and I have code that doesn't work. Oh, missing a parenthesis. Actually, before we do all this anyway, I need to push code over. Uh, Control S. Let's make sure that worked. Did Android go? Android's not done yet. Oh, it's still building. All right, we're just going to assume it's good. We're going to, it's building, so it has to be right, right? Font registrar looks good. We did that looks good. This looks good. Yep, cleaned that up, ditched the to-do, embedded the fonts, that's nice and pretty. Font extensions, that looks good. 
Android manifest. We don't want to check that in. All right. So um, cleaned up. Um, what do we call that? What's that extent? That's I am edited on now. Returns the path on success. Let's push that up. All right, that's installing. Go, go, go. Why is my CPU going? The emulator. The emulator's killing us, guys. Oh. Keep hearing fancy sounds on my streams, and I have no idea what's causing them. It's not Streamlabs. Really need to figure that out. All right, that's running. Go, run, run. All right, and we have fancy, fa fancy fonts are still working here. Nice, I'm happy with that. All right, so let's finish that commit. Let's push this up. Let's, oh, we did push it. <laughs> let's push it forward. Let's go over to this machine. Let's over here, oops, wrong hotkeys. No, it is this one? No. Remembering the right hotkeys. There we go. Using a Mac keyboard from a Mac onto Windows machine. It's always fun. All right, fetch origin. We just fixed that extension. We'll have to jump in and fix it some more. Cool origin. I was so close on having UWP work yesterday without actually running it. All right, so let's look at this extension. So... We're going to need to change this extension to do the same thing. So what we need to do is we need to go create that same um, font loader. So what we've done is we're going to use iOS or Android as a reference because Android's it's going to be the same file. We probably can just copy it over. So UWP is going to need to use something different though on it. Maybe it'll be different. We'll try. All right, so platform Android. We created the embedded for font resource loader. Um, I can probably ditch that to do. Because I'm okay with this now. We don't need that static. All right. Let's just push that really quick. All right, push that. Now let's go, we're basically going to build the same thing. We're going to get the font, we're going to copy it out of the resource, and we're going to pump it in. So let's go over to our iOS, Android, one, or Android, our UWP. Man, this window's tiny. I zoomed, made my whole solution bigger, but of course this window doesn't get any bigger. Let's go find UWP. All right, UAP. Let's create... Let's open the Android one as well. And I can't scroll. It scrolls funny since I'm in a nested window. Where was that? Oh, come on. Scroll work. All right. So we want embedded. Is that the right one? Sermon forms platforms. Oh, it's just not. It's not in renderers. It's just here. All right. Embedded font loader. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to close this, go back to here, create a new file. There's the create button. Didn't I have a create button there? It's not like off screen, is it? All right. IDE is not working with me. I'm going to make this thing go full screen. I hopefully won't chop off anything for you guys. No, it's not. It looks good. Let me adjust that some. Beautiful. Can't even tell now. Actually, I should lower that down because that's right. Now I can bring it back up. Hey, Visual Studio has an update. We'll update you later. All right. So now let's see if I can add... Oh, it's under add, new item. I'm sure I thinking add existing. All right, so we're going to add an empty code file. We're going to make this one named embedded font loader. Perfect. Now we're going to, let's just steal this code. Let's just see if we can actually do it a one for one. 
Um, we know we don't need all that because we just deleted that. Let's see what happens when we paste this thing in there. I can't do path and all this in UWP, can I? I think that's what's going to get me. Come on, control dot should do the little light bulb thing. Okay, that got us path. Wow, that's just purely going to work. I wonder why control dot supposed to do that screen. There we go. Enter. <laughs> that was really, really, really easy. All right, we're just using the same exact file for UWP and for iAndroid. Let's undo that. Let's scroll this back over. I think we'll be fine now. Oh, man, then that's ratio is all wrong. That looks fine. All right. Let's, oh, if I zoom that in, it messes with the scroll. Sorry, this is just bugging me that how it looks on my screen. Shouldn't matter, but it does. All right, so we've got that. Now we need to, um, we need to actually enable that. So let's go into, it's under properties, assembly info. We can just do one of these export renders. Oh, I can't scroll again. We're going back to full screen. Not being able to scroll makes it impossible for me to code. All right, so now we can scroll. Okay, image sources, cells. Wow, they have them nice and organized here. This one doesn't fit with any of those, so we'll just add a new one. Fonts. Uh, assembly. This one is embedded. No, export font. Type of. Now I want to double check to make sure I'm doing this right. If we go to the Android one. I think it's the first one is the inter the, what we're adding, and the second one's the interface. Or I've got it backwards. It's so easy to get it backwards. All right, so we just added the font one into, oh, export renderer. Oh, we're just using the renderer stuff. I'll just copy it. Can't hurt. Embedded font loader. Perfect. Now we have the fonts. OK, so now what we should be able to do is go into our test project. This might just work. This was like the shortest ever to finish this up. I don't know why I didn't finish it before. I know it has out of time and other things to do. But that's not the point. This is super fast and exciting. All right, so let's just delete this. Our fonts are gone. We don't need our fonts in the UWP anymore. Oh, no, we're not done. We need to make the font loading use that. OK, getting ahead of myself. You know, we already have the fonts added as resources, so we're fine there. So now we jump over to the embedded the font extension. That's Android. This the UWP one? Okay. Yes. So this UWP font thing is horrible. We have to do get all possible ones because there's no way to actually search and see what exists in a font. So on iOS and Android, we're able to say, hey, does this font exist? And it'll say yes or no. UWP does not have that built in. So what I had to do was based on what the font thing was, go figure out what the font file was. From that, figure out what the path could be. And hopefully say, OK, here's all the options it could be. Now if we're using embedded fonts, though, it's a nice optimization because we can say, hey, does this font exist? If it does, we'll return yes. If it doesn't, then we can get all the other permutations of it. So this is actually a nice optimization using the embedded fonts on UWP. Make sure no one's talking in chat. You guys are quiet today. No one's talking to me. People are there, right? You can hear me. I don't have chat. Let me put a chat window on this other one, too. Just so I have a chat window when I'm in full screen on the other one. Oops, that didn't copy. Actually, I have it as bookmarked. 
So yes, ask questions, comment, tell me I'm doing this wrong, tell me I'm doing it great. Just want to know if someone's there listening. All right, so in UWP, we can now go through and we always send back the base font in case it's something built in. That way, you don't always need stuff, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the font file from string, right? Gets us this. Gives us all the extensions. So we can say, if it has an extension, you know exactly what you want. So instead of just doing this, we can now do... Um, we can do our font registrar dot has font and we can pass in a font string trying to remember so that is just going to be I wrote this what two days ago and I'm trying to remember how this works so when, when we're using this we say font file dot with um, extension so we need it with the extension okay so if it has extension We'll do a first one, first run if it has the extension, right? And we'll say var has font um, file path equals has font. Ooh, wrong button. That totally messed things up. Okay, that's good. My go left and go right hotkeys do not work on Windows. <laughs> it docks the window instead. All right. So now we can say in here this font file, not font family, font file dot with extension, right? So if has font, we can just um, yield. Do we do a break? Isn't there a break one? I thought I'd do that on it. A yield break. I think I have to yield return then break. Yield return file path. So I'll yield right, that would help. All right, I think that's what I do. So I go and now we're done. It has the font. Super exciting. So now. Um, and if it doesn't has the font, else we'll do this guy. So that's the old code. So if they have it embedded, or they don't have it embedded, they have the font path, we'll send it back with the path. Good, we're done. All right, so this one's now taken care of. Now, if they don't have it, we should loop through each extension, see if it exists. If it exists in any of the extensions, we're good. We'll return that one. If not, then we have to do this thing. So let's, we're gonna have to loop through these extensions twice to do this right. But the first one will be more efficient. There's only two of them, so it's not really, really doesn't count. All right, so let's copy this again. And this time what we'll do is we'll pass in the extension because we can say, hey, give us this extension instead of the one that's built in. Now what we can say if if has font um, return that thing, right? If not, the font doesn't exist, we're done. So if why is that complaining? Oh, that else. Yeah, this else doesn't exist. We don't even need this. Now we can say, okay, so the font's not embedded. At this point, we can safely say it's not embedded. We are now going to search and look for it under these paths. This should work. I really hope this works. Let's run it. Only one way to find out. Hey, Nathaniel Noons, thanks for the follow. Uh-oh. Oh, no, that's all the iOS stuff. We don't care about that. Yeah, I think this is good. I think it'll work. Man, we just added UWP. <laughs> really, really simple. After doing all the work for iOS and Android, adding that other platform was just like nothing. Uh, this is still... Uh-oh. Where... Okay, why is that complaining? That's so weird. Invalid.
Okay, that makes sense. Double that. How did that work? It works on it compiles on mono, but doesn't compile here. So let's run that one. That one I get. Can I convert car to string? If font dot contains, you can totally say, does it contain a character? Okay, it's running. That's a weird error that it's giving me. Oop, all right, let's bring that window back up. Run, run, run. Let's see if you have fancy fonts. Okay. Where's font extensions? Formatted. Okay, so we're giving it back a path. So we did find our font. I think, oh, that's not right. We're missing something. So we need to format this thing before we return it. Because we're just giving... Actually, maybe that's not right. Maybe that is right. Let's just see what it does. Nope, we need to tell it more than that. Okay, so we need to format that. And I'm pretty sure I did that on... No, iOS and Android just can do it from that, I thought. I don't know why you're complaining. Go away. You're fine. All right, so let's go into our, is this the UWP one? Yes, UWP. So now when we return this, we can't just send back the file path. These need to be formatted. And did I give us a nice format? Can't remember. I don't think so. Um, I think what we need to do is reparse it back out. Yeah. Let's check, oops, check GitHub, Git really quick. And did I already have it in there? I did, I did. All right, so we need this. This we killed prematurely. Oh, we still have it there, and our second one. Font extensions, that's Android. Font extensions, it's this one. All right, so this is what we have to return. Let's copy that. Let's put that right here. So if, it's, if it exists, we don't need the path. That's not needed. This is going to be file path. And that will cover this whole thing. So file path. And then we get the get. Okay, perfect. Yield formatted. Right. Got to remember how the different fonts work. Android just wants a path. I does, iOS just wants the name. UWP wants the path and the name, but the name without spaces. Wish they'd be consistent. Of course not. Everyone does things different. Audio's good. I have people watching. No one's complaining. My mic's blown out this time. I'm actually still just asking to get anyone to talk in chat. Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? All right. We're not seeing fancy fonts, though. What are we doing wrong? Do I need to escape this file path? I think I do. I bet I need to escape it. Let's run this again. Hey, Daniel, thanks for talking. Someone's here. I'm not alone. Okay. Um, do I have the breakpoint in the right one? Oh, this one is doing it wrong, too. So it has the extension. We need to fix that one. We can fix that. It's this one. Okay, found it. Found the issue. Found it. Okay. Run it again. Okay, go to speakers. Sorry, just toying with my music while I wait for this to load. All right, so now we're getting the right formatted string. That looks right. As ugly as that is, that looks right. Let's press play. Still not right, though. I wish they'd tell you when it fails to load. So maybe I need to, let's look at the UWP docs. Uh, too big, too big. Actually, I'm going to do it on my other screen just because it's easier. 
All right, so let's look at it right here. Let's look at EWX. Oh, glad. I'm glad you like the G Music work. I'm actually using G Music right now, the old Mac version. Um, yeah, if there's anything you want me to continue, want me to do or while I'm building those streams to make it more useful for you, let me know. We're almost ready for um, doing the audio playback, which is really exciting. That part is going to be a big and really important piece, of course, audio playback. And the downloader and the streaming and all that fun stuff. Um, I think I need to UW. I think we'll look at that one. UWP. This is the one I was looking for. So, yeah, super exciting for the upcoming ones. After everyone's suggestions yesterday, I looked into doing a custom font for my SVGs instead of my SVGs, and I think I'm going to do it. I had to edit my SVGs before the font stuff would like it. But I generated a font, and I think I'm going to use it. So I'm kind of excited about that. I thought I saw something in here. That's just the typography. I've looked at this a lot. That's why that was highlighted. But that's not the one I'm looking for. OK, let's see what this guy has to say. What does Martin have to say? No, I don't want your notifications. Assets, assets, we've done that. Da -da -dum. Fallback. That's not it. So UWP font fallbacks. Oh, if you're using audio player, are you using the old G Music one? Um, and are you trying to stream and download, or what are you trying to build? How are you trying to do it? Maybe it's this one. There's something with fallbacks. Okay, fallback family. That's what I'm looking for. That's not it. So the audio player stuff in G Music is kind of tricky. You'll notice that inside of that, the AV audio player, um, it will allow you to download ahead of time and then stream it back. It does its own custom protocol that lets me handle the downloading. So it, it's kind of tricky. And I'll walk through all of that when I'm building it again. And yeah, I'm also going to do something similar on Android. So really fun. All right, there's something for fallbacks. I found it before. All right, um, UWP font fallback path. There's something you have to do with the path, and I think I need to escape it. Come on. Let's look at this guy's blog. Maybe this guy tells us. All right, this is for, that doesn't help us because that's for Windows Phone. I know I saw something where you can pass in a path. Hmm, come on. All right, this is going to take longer than I thought. Sad. We're so close. So close, yet so far away. So yeah, what G Music does is none of the built-in audio players, they're all horrible. All of them are really bad with how they deal with caching stuff. Most of them will only cache data as they need it. So a 5 meg song, they may only download a meg of it. Well, on phones, you can't do that. You just download the whole thing. The problem is... The connections are so intermittent. If you have a good connection, use it. They could be going into a tunnel. They could be walking down the subway. And so I aggressively cache in G Music. And those path slashes were different. That shouldn't matter because I'm telling it. Yeah. So what I do with that is I aggressively cache ahead of time. Now that could be a thing if you download, the current song's already downloaded, they're playing it, they're five seconds in, the next song's already playing, or downloading, and you want to start playing it now, if you want to use that data that's half done, none of the audio players support that. None of them. So <laughs> I had to do lots of hacks to allow that. Lots of abusive stuff. I did multiple different things to make that work right. Okay, I know I can UWP font lookup location. I think I did something like that. Maybe that's how I found it. I know I looked at this, how to detect if they exist, and no, nothing will tell you if they exist. That's not it. So, why are they using that type of slash? My slashes are the wrong direction, but that shouldn't matter. Do they need to be URI style instead of file path? 
You know what? Let's just try this. Um, actually, let's that off screen so it doesn't keep showing up. Let's look at what we're doing for our path. Our path is that way. I think the problem is this needs to be URI. Can't hurt, right? Is it just new URI? And I pass it in. Um, oh, no, but I want file path. So, hey, you've been following up the font stuff. Super interesting. Um, if it's possible to get much unit test coverage for this, or is it awkward because it's platform specific? The platform specific stuff, depending on the platform, is going to be hard. UWP has no way for me to tell. There can't. Like I said, I it doesn't error. It doesn't tell me. I can't look up and see if it found the fonts. So I have to do these lookup paths, which is weird. That's why I moved as much of it as I could. I wanted the trickier part, which is going to be the parsing of those things, into, that's why I put that into the platform stuff so we could do tests on that. Because, yeah, it's lame. I really, not platform, into controls. I want to figure out how to test more of this, but it's really tricky. How do I do that in platform specific? But that's why I moved this parsing, the font parsing, that font file, that's why I didn't want to add any more over public API, but I figured it was better to add public API so I could do this in cross-platform and test it. And so we have tests for the parsing part. Now for the using it, I'm not sure how to test that. Um, we might be able to do something with, um, with uh, what am I thinking, with UI test where we can maybe query and see what font it's displaying, but is it just going to spit back what I bound to it and not what it's truly using? That's the tricky part. So on Android and iOS, I could do more because it'll blow up if it can't find it or at least tell me, hey, I can't find that. UWP is like, oh, well, I'm going to work anyway. So var f, let's just see what happens if I do file query dot to string. I just want to see if this will reformat it in a different path, and if so, we'll use that. So yeah, it's a pretty tricky problem. But I'm definitely testing the other font stuff, so it's being tested as much as possible. But this part, <laughs> I don't know. If you're op if you have any suggestions, I'd love to it. So the yield keyword, perfect. That's great. So this is something that you don't see used very often. You'll notice what I do here, though, is I have an i enumerable of string. So this is saying it's going to it's going to return a list esque thing, so just unnumber unknown number of strings. And yield is saying, hey, just add this to the results. So I can now do it in line without having to loop through all of them up front. So I don't I could just make a list, go through and do this and add things to the list, and then return a list. Same thing. But I like this syntax of being able to do it without nesting it and saving it to a variable to say, hey, return this. So it's going to add this as the first item in that in that array. Let's just assume it's an array. It's not, but think of it as an array. So this one's going to be zero. If it finds it, it'll do this one, and then it returns instantly so it doesn't have to keep going. That's what this yield break does. This says, hey, we're done. There's nothing else left. So yeah. This just says, just return these, and it just keeps adding them to the bottom of that array. And at this one, I just say, hey, throw them all in there, because if we've made it this far, so it's just a different style syntax rather than saving everything out as an array. And the other thing that's nice about this, if you're doing something to where the output is being tested, so if let's just say you have a thousand items this thing can return, and whatever's calling them is going to look and say, is this valid, yes or no? You don't have to loop through and create that list of all a thousand of them. It can, I enumerables, you loop through them as get next, get next, get next. And so it'll just test them in order. And so if it finds the first three, they're good, it's just gonna stop and it's not gonna keep going on this. So that's really exciting. So yeah, that's how that thing works. All right, so let's, I had a break point, didn't I? Didn't I, Chris, I didn't press play. Should have pressed play while I was talking. So that's what that enumerable thing is in the yield. It's really powerful. Depending on, 
it, but it can make it a little bit harder to read since it's an odd syntax, but it's really, really powerful. Especially with an undetermined number of things and you don't want to iterate through everything. All right, so formatted. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, it's coming down to here. I thought we had one up here. Okay. Which one was returning? I have something wrong. Let's double check that. Let's let's copy this down here just in case. Yeah, no problem. I have no problem. If you see something in my code that doesn't make sense or you're wondering what it does or how it works, I love teaching and explaining. So feel free to ask at any point. My wife borrowed my sippy cup, so I have a giant cup of water, and I'm hoping I don't spill it on my computer. That's why it's way away. Why I just make my floor wet. All right, so let's look at this. This F is now fly. That's now right. I wonder if we use that instead. Okay, let's do that. I like that. That F is what we wanted. I think. Let's find out. And then we'll put one of those in with the extensions. We can test that path as well. Go, 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 go to speakers. OK, that formatted string looks better. I bet that's what we needed. No, why not? Hmm. Anyone see anything wrong with my code? I really want to find that doc I had before. I found something before that told about that lookup path, and it showed examples of doing like fully qualified paths. UWP font lookup um, full path. <laughs> they're saying, oh, look, that's ridiculous. Uh, actually, they're saying that system.drawing.txt, there's an installed font collection. That could be useful. I should look at that for later. All right, so no, they're showing that. That totally works, but I know I can do a path. All right, we're going to do something crazy. We are just going to go over here. We are going to copy one of these fonts to my desktop. And we're just going to hard code my desktop path. Actually, we're going to put it in C colon. OK, pages. Let's know it's resources. Continue. Continue, continue, continue. All right, perfect. So it is the second one. It does not have it this. So we are now going to just say, uh, what is it? The hotkey is control, control KC. I hate that, I hate that hotkey. All right. So we're going to do C colon, uh, sorry, C colon slash slash. And now inside of here, we will now say font file dot to extension, file name with extension, and we. There we go. All right. So let's see. Make let's see if that works. Oh, you found some font stuff. Okay. Yeah, I use different. Well, live streaming. I actually use different browsers. 
<laughs> just to help isolate myself from personal data or anything else. So bringing up my history on stream doesn't make sense. This might be the doc I was looking for. That's it. It does the file. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, How would I say that? t Brook Foxhound? Okay. This is what I needed, though. Thank you. Perfect. Perfecto. No, did I not copy? Oh, I used the wrong... Used Windows command paste. Okay, this is what we need. So, in here... They need the file. So they're saying you can do an absolute URI. So file, colon, colon, colon. Okay, I think that's what we had. Let's just, let's just check. All right, so let's go back over to here. Speakers. So this is going to return the wrong thing. So slashes are wrong. So... Man, I could not find that one. That's the one I was looking for before, though. All right. So this looks... A, I know it's ridiculously small and hard to see. Let's... Okay, that font exists, and PT Mono is what it wants. That should be right. Yeah, that follows. I'm just looking at that again. Um, actually, they're not specifying the file name. So I don't say the file name then. That's really, really weird. All right. So we don't need the file path. We do need the file path. We just <laughs> now. We, uh, this is so ridiculous. All right. So let's just try this. So now var path equals path dot. Get file or get directory name. I think this is what I need. Is it the directory name? I think that'll be right. All right, so we'll just do FP for now. Do this. We'll say this. All right, let's... That is craziness. Who does that? Now I'm curious how they're going to find that file or that font. All right, so let's look at this. We're missing a slash, though. We need a trailing slash. Okay, let's run that. All right, here we go, here we go. Oh, I have the screen there. All right, let's try this again. Speakers, formatted. If this works, that is just crazy talk. All right, we'll return. It's not right. I don't know how they do that without knowing the font. Sorry, let me look at this doc here again so you guys can all see. It's just saying new font family.
maybe let's try something different. Let's go crazy. All right. So it could be, so what I'm doing, let's just look how this is used. It could be with how I'm using this. So get all fonts, it goes and does this, right? If we know we found it, Yeah, the not seeing. Just reading through that doc again. Is this a WPF thing only? It doesn't work in UWP? All right, let's look at the API really quick. Maybe we can do something different if it's one that's found inside outside the app path, because that could be what the problem is. All right, let's stop this. Just a string. Yeah, because that API is differently. No from, and the only thing is a single string going in. This can include hash suffix. All right, let's try this again. Let's say, remove this down. So if we find it first, it'll be fine, right? If we don't find it, then we'll re... Oops, dang it, I didn't mean to do that. Let's move this down to here. Now we can try doing something clever. Now it'll only be one. And if it's only one, maybe it'll work without the fallback. Actually, let's put a breakpoint right here. All right, so it's only sending back one now. We know that path is right, has the hash. That's not going to work. Let's go throw the .ttf back on it. Oops, not pause. I don't want to pause. Where was our path stuff? Ah, right here. Ooh, whoa, what just happened? Oh, I did Command D. Showed my desktop. All right, let's run this again. This is just crazy to me. I don't know why this doesn't work. Yeah, we only need one if we know exactly what it is and where it's at. You know, I wonder if on these other ones, if instead of just returning them, if I could do a file.exists on that extension. We might toy with that too, just because. Are you going to load? Oh, okay. All right, formatted. That has the file path. And we know that file path exists because we clicked on it and loaded it. Mind blowing. All right, might have to be MS Apex URI format. Maybe, what's that look like? I'm not familiar with that. I'm willing to try anything at this point. Um, I'm just Googling what that is really quick. Do that on this screen so you guys can see.
All right, scheme is the file. So it has that. I think that's right. It already has that, right? But you're saying it probably needs that instead of file? File's pretty universal, though. You'd think that it would know because then it looks that up at the file system. And we can try. We can do it. Can't hurt. Let's try it. What's the worst that's going to happen, right? This is just craziness. Oh, okay, so you found... So this file path, that imp-cook, where does that go? Like, is that relative? Because, like, oh, I'll just try that. Can't hurt. Let's try it. Oh. Stop this, so... We're just going to do it lazy Why? So ms dash a x and I probably should be nicer about it. All right, let's look what that looks like. That should be right. Close enough. That's what it is. I'm really ashamed. Really, really ashamed. Although what we did here without that should work on WPF instead of UWP. All right. All right, that looks right. Still not working. I've given it the file path. I've given it the file name. I don't know what else it could want. I might have to contact someone on the UWP team. Be like, what is going on with your font loading? How do I do this? Well, I don't know why I haven't searched for that yet, but why not? You can't load a font as long as you don't have full system privileges. <laughs> Let a user pick a file from the system. So I need to copy it first. Okay. This is what we need to do. I found it! You are on the right path, though. Look how it says MS App Data. That's close. All right. So I have a copy of it, right? So application So this is what I need to do. Okay, let's go change. That's that's easy. This should be easy to fix. Stupid sandboxes. All right, UWP. Oops. Whoa, copy that stuff. Come on, be nice. All right, var folder. <laughs> and this is an asynchronous call where that one's not. Well, that's going to be fun. So application data, uh, there's a cache one. And we'll just go with the 
All right, so we have the file. Ooh, wrong button. Sorry. Let's do this now. Isn't that what they did? File. What's that? Oh, I don't have a storage file per se. I wonder if we can copy from a stream. Let's... Let's see what we have in here. Okay, that's what we can do. Okay, I know what to do. All right, so we have the folder. Now we can say, how do I check if it exists though? TMP directory dot file. Oh, I know why that's in this task. Shh, we're doing this. Um, can I not result? That's a task, so I should be able to just like. Does they force you into like asyncing on UWP? How do they do that? Because this should just be I async operation. It's not a task. All right. <sighs> okay, so it was that result thing. This is bad, I know. But all it's doing is... All right, dot file. So not have an exist. What happens if that file doesn't exist? Oh, we'll just do this. <sighs> okay, get file. I hate this dot result. This is nonsense. I don't like doing this. I might need to figure out how to make this thing async. How do I tell if it exists though? This is a, I don't like this API at all. All right, turn my music down. It's getting too loud. All right, so UWP, The fact that you have to Google how to check a file exists. Fail if exists? That can't be what people do. Try get item. Okay. That doesn't exist off of there. So await that local folder. It's a storage folder. Okay, so I do tmp dir dot try get a sync. Perfect. And we'll say, hey, go try and get this font name. See if you can get that out. Try, they had it wrapped in a try catch, but I shouldn't have to do a try catch if I'm doing a try. It should just be re null. So if file is not equal to null, 
Compile done. Can I pass it back a path? Yes, I can. All right, we're making progress, guys. Fighting the sandbox. We're fighting the good fight, but this is getting somewhere. All right. So now we can do create file. Create file, and we'll just do... Oh, font. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. This one is here. Sorry, I'm really not familiar with UWP. This is, a lot of this is new to me, so it's kind of fun building, building Xamarin form stuff that works with it, since it's all new to me, it's not something I really know. All right, so file dot, how do I write to this file now? All right, so let's Google UWP. UWP. Ah, so sad. All right, storage folder, storage, right? So create file, place exists. Writing to a file. I have the file. I don't want to write text. By buffer. Wait, what? Okay, that's just to get the binary. Now I can do system.io write buffer. That's what I need. So bad. Can I just write, I have to write buffer. Does a buffer, does a stream count as that? Okay, so we're we're gonna copy this stuff. So we have our resource stream. It's crazy how they gave us such a brand new API. WP. It's not going to like that. Uh, or is it? I storage item cannot convert from I storage item to I storage file. How do you use these iStorage files? This is so complicated. I am trying to write a stream to a file. I should just be able to do like file.write. Or when I'm creating it, I should be able to create it from that stream or some simple, nice, usable API. Not this nonsense. All right, so storage. What's this thing live under? What namespace? So this is an iStorage item. This needs an i file item. How do I get an i file? No, right buffer takes an i storage file. It must be this buffer part. Cannot convert a stream to an i buffer item. We can fix this, right? We can just say cuz these are going to be tiny anyway. This is dumb to do it, but bar Bytes equals font dot resource stream dot read. Do I have to read? I need to make this a stream reader, don't I? Or something nice like that. To get them to a byte. I don't want to just... Ooh, as input stream. Are one of those one of those things? No, that's an I input stream. I wonder if those are usable. File IO. 
Any UWP experts on this? Right buffer. That's what I want to do is just say like right buffer. All right, so let's just do UWP. What's my just here? Oh wait, using a stream. Writing text. Oh, I already. So... Okay, okay. This might be doable. That actually. Okay, so this is going back to a stream thing. All right. So we're not going to write text. So what we need to do for a stream, writing text to a file using a stream. First, open the file by calling storage file open async. It returns the file stream. OK. Streams. I know how to deal with streams. I can do that. So thank you. File.open. I can't remember where that was at. So sample file, which sample file should have been what we have here. So file.open as async. That's not what I'm seeing. So file. This returns us. Oh, because that's it was this dropping down type. I think that was our problem there. All right, well, that's fine. F dot open async. Whew. All right, so now we have a stream. So now S dot. All right, so now we have, how do you not know what comes out of that? Oh, because I don't have parentheses. Right. All right. So we now have a stream that we've opened. All right, so we have a stream. Get output stream at zero. OK. Wow, this is so, so convoluted. I wonder, or let's look at what this thing is. So then I do that with the, oh, but that's going to do it back to a string. I don't want a string. That didn't copy and paste right. All right, so that's inside a data writer. Hopefully this is fun for all of you watching me completely struggle through this. Who knew? Oh. That's under... Come on, do I need more of this? What's in this namespace? Not copying right. So, still not sure if this is going to work because it's different APIs. Yes, they're saying we're dealing with streams, but they're not system.io streams. That's the problem. See if anyone else. Storage folder, right? That, that, that. Oh, I can just do dot open. 
And then I have the file that I'm used to dealing with. That is so much easier. Why didn't they put that in their docs? If this works. Sometimes that stuff doesn't work. Let's undo a lot of this. Wow, I wrote a lot of code. Ooh, go forward, go forward. F dot open. No, but that's not what we just asked for. Oh, I can just open that path directly. Okay. Dot, which mode do I want? Just open? All right. Hey, someone doing to Stack Overflow. Let's see what you say. Okay, I'll look at that one, but let's just see if what I have here works. I think I might have it. I really think I have it now. F.path. I just needed to get use the stored stuff first. All right, so file. I think I have it. Okay, I think this is it, guys. Now we can delete all this nonsense. <laughs> this is so convoluted. All right, so now that we have that, yeah, I'll check that link out in a second, though, Nathaniel. Thanks for saying that. I, I hope I got it. I really do. All right, so now let's make sure we're using this right. And we'll go back to that other doc that was found. And what did the, which one was that? It's this MS app data. Actually, I wonder what the file path is gonna be. Let's just debug and see what's coming out of this thing. Font extension. No, uh, that's Android, close Android. You're not useful. All right, so let's run this. And let's see what comes out. My sippy cup is back. Man, this is just, it makes sense. UWP sandbox. We can't just access something from C colon because it's in a sandbox. Okay, that did not work. Let's go to our font loader. Close you. Let's put some breakpoints in here. So I just need to use the storage APIs to generate the URL. Then I can actually use my own stuff, or file.io after that. Okay. Is this even firing? That should not have happened. Run, run, run. All right, it's calling that. Hmm. 
I'm sorry, I'm not even seeing this thing fire. It's like instantly going. All right, so go check the font registry. Okay, this is going to call. Is this blowing up? Where's my step button? Where's my step over? I can step backwards, but I can't step forwards. Okay, I dig it. Something's blowing up. Or that result is returning instantly. Let's go back to... This guy. Throw one more giant try catch on there. Got a break point there. Maybe it's the local cache folder. It doesn't like that. That should be work. Should work. Should work. Maybe that create folder, if it already exists, it blows up. I need to have something else in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate that. And standard.net, it doesn't care. Oops, no. Open if exists. What it should do. Should be the default. All right, run again. We're getting somewhere, guys. We're getting somewhere. All right, has font. Thank you guys for the help, though. It's been very useful. A method was called at an unexpected time. <laughs> what? <laughs> what method was called at an unexpected time? Get result. It does not like the get result on that. OK. Why is that unexpected? See if anything else comes up. Wait, what? Get a waiter dot get results. Oh, so bad. All right, that makes sense. I really hate this API. What do they say on that? Dot. There is no get a waiter. And I know it has to do with me using async and await wrong because I can't make this asynchronous for the other platforms. They need the result instantly, so I could and just dot result them. I don't like this. Um let's try something else. There's nothing else. It's a, there's as task.
Let's see if that works. I like using these as tax tests. All right, so let's do that and then dot as task. Use the APIs I know. Let's hope it's okay with that. Problem with being old, you just use what you're used to. Run this. We're so close, I can feel it. Run. Run. <gasps> yes, that's working. We have a file path. Uh oh. That's not the file path I want. Temp directory. Okay, it's still inside C user. That's still in the same type of path. Maybe it's now how we use that. We have to use it differently. All right, let's just see what it does. Oh, I don't want that replace, I don't think. Run this again. Let's stop. We don't want all this. All right, so it's definitely, it's doing the same type of thing. You'll notice it's going to the same place. The difference is on this, I think we need to return the diff of this folder path, the local cache. All right, let's go look at this other. Which doc was it? When you guys would link something, I could scroll back through chat and grab it, but I thought it was. All right, where was that in font? Yeah, we saw something about that. Uh, is this a, no, that's different. This API is just killing me. All right, so I think we need to do the the local whatever file path with the MS. Where did we have that at? Now I can't remember where we had all of our all of our docs. Too many windows open. Too many windows. I only had one of these, right? Here we go. Oh, is that this one? Same one? Okay. Same one. Okay. So storage import, right? Why don't they use... That's weird that they copy it to local folder, local slash font cache. So let's... Okay, let's just fix this then. I think I know what to do. I don't like it. I don't like it at all, but I think this will work. So I think we need to do a relative URI, strip off the beginning part, and then make it again. So we need all of this gone. Okay. We can do this. We can do this. All right. Data dot dot current dot local cache folder. 
All right, and now path dot get gets this one that will get its parent. Okay, so now that we have the parent, oh, I need to do dot path. So ugly. All right, so that gets us the root. So now we get before we return that. Let's add something else on here. Um, how can you sit so long without taking a break? Um, I've been doing this for way too long. Way too long. And I have my water. I'm good, right? All right. So we'll also say Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, so now we'll do file. I'm trying to think how to do this right. We could just do file path dot replace root comma, and now according to that, you ooh wrong button again. According to that one, we do ms date app data. Yes, I actually work way less than I used to. I mean, back in the day, I used to work 60 to 80 hour weeks. So I'm well groomed and sitting in a chair for a long time. I will mix it up. I've got a hammock. Go work in the hammock once in a while. Can't live stream from a hammock. Plenty of that was done in bed too. Horrible coding positions. Actually, I need to convert this into a URI first. All right, so we're just going to Replace that with nothing. Now what we'll do is okay. Now from the URI, URI dot um, dot scheme. These are editable, right? No, it's get only? All right, so we will do that I could replace the scheme on that. It's right. So new URI. I don't want to do all the string replacement. It's really ugly and it's expensive. Not that expensive. We're not doing it that many times. Okay, relative path equals URI dot to string. Now at this point we should just be able to do we're going to move all this URI stuff out of here so it'll be in the right form before it gets there so now when we use it we're not going to have to do all of that. Nope, nope, wrong button. Dot and then we'll just say Okay, that's a lot of ugliness in there. Hopefully this will work. We don't need this. We can now say... <laughs> that is really bad. We might be able to clean that up. I just want to see if we can get it working, and then we can think how to make it cleaner.
All right. I'm liking that, liking that. All right, let's run it. Let's see what comes out of this. So difficult. So difficult. I should be able to pass it a file path, not go and turn it into this weird this weird nonsense. Well, that's going. I just want to read this again. Yeah. Why? Why not just use the file? This is back to that same doc that we already found, but I didn't understand what they were trying to say. App data takes you right to the local one. I should be able to use a hard-coded path, not... All right, it's going to create it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, because it's relative. Oh, that's perfect. We can do this then. Let's just try this first. So, R B C. I don't know if that'll work. It might. All right. Oh, wait. I didn't actually use that. Let me use that. All right. So what we're doing is we're going to say this is the base URL, which is nothing, just to get us that scheme. And then we'll have this file path, which will be that. Let's put a breakpoint there. Let's run this. We're getting there. I'm sorry, guys. This was painful. I really thought we'd be done the stream in like no time because it was we're killing it at first. Did everything beautifully. Then we get to actually loading the fonts in UWP and it all falls apart. All right. Don't need that breakpoint anymore. So our root, our file path. Are you at base URIs? That's going to work. Okay, so our base is that. That's looking right. That looks exactly like what we want. So it has the font. All right, guys, we're getting somewhere. This better, this better work. I don't know what else to say. If this doesn't work, I hate this nonsense. And I might be saying we're done, and i got to contact the UWP team, see if anybody knows how to make this work. But it's not working! Come on! So frustrating! Did I do MS app data? I don't think I did. All right, that's my bad. That's my fault. I shouldn't be yelling at anyone else when I type wrong. Type all the things wrong. Please work, though. Please work. I like how this window placement is all over the place. Totally different every single time. That's still not right. I'm about to just call this and I don't even know. All right, where is this being used again? Wait, what are they doing with Sharp DX? They're actually like parsing out the names. That's fancy. All right. MS app data. Local cache slash fonts. Font name. 
Anyone notice anything wrong with that? That looks right to me. I have tried everything I can think of to get a f to get this name in here. We can do local instead of local cache. Maybe it has to be in local. You can't do local cache. No, I don't care. Let's do local. No, is that right? I might be going down too far. So they create in local folder, they create font cache, right? We call ours font, so what? Big difference. They're doing local slash font cache. Maybe we just hard code it. See if that works. I'm running out of ideas. I have Googled. That says local state. You know what? Let's hard code. Let's see what happens when we hard code this. I at least use variables so I don't have to have it in multiple places. Okay. All right, let's try that. No, oh, wrong hotkey. Doing my Visual Studio for Mac hotkey to run doesn't work on <laughs> Visual Studio. Hmm. Local fonts. All right, let's see. Let's see, let's see. No such luck. Well, we just caused a crash, though. That's interesting. That's something to look at. But why aren't our fonts coming? Hmm. Really, really confused here. Anyone have any other ideas? Why are you off screen? I mean, I've copied it. Actually, what's the... double check something else make sure I did do it with the right file name and extension
Those fonts definitely exist there. We're definitely doing that. We copy it into there. If we double click on these fonts, they're valid, so we didn't mess up copying them. The font name matches PT Mono. Cute font, cute font. That file exists. There's cute font. I just want to double check how we're using them again. I don't want to click on that and see what caused that crash because that was craziness. It could be because we're not properly loading the font though. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for joining Nathaniel. Sorry this didn't get finished. I might be done for the day soon anyway. I'm really confused as to why this is not working. Um, all right, breakpoints there, breakpoints here. Hopefully I'll get this figured out soon. Like, I'm baffled. Baffled this doesn't work. Okay, we don't need that breakpoint anymore. We know what's going on there. All right, formatted. MS app data, local slash fonts. That's the file path. MS app data, colon, three slashes. All right, let's zoom this in. MS app data, three slashes, local fonts, that. There's a slash at the end. There's a slash. Why is there a slash? Oh, man. If that's it. Oh, man. There's a slash. Oh, wrong hotkey. Again, sitting there waiting for it to load. So mad at UW Flex. This has been so painful. There's still a slash there. Oh. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. How long has that slash been there and causing problems? I wonder if I fixed it earlier and didn't know because I had a slash hard-coded there. Back from when we were testing one of the old incarnations. I feel smart. Now I want to undo that cleansing and see if it works. If this works, that formatted is right. No slash. No slash. Please show fonts. Please just show fonts. <gasps> fonts are working! They're working! I don't have a celebration gif. Oh, or sound. Ah. <sighs> I need a celebration noise. I have no idea what that should be. But I need something when we celebrate. That is right. Now I want to go back. We know this works. Let's not do all this nonsense. Let's just return it. Oops, wrong button. I'm, if I was right a long time ago and I just had that ridiculous thing in there, so sad. Let's just see what this does. Oh, unreachable code doesn't like that. I gotta comment this out. Control, could you see? Oh man. 
I zoomed in on that like three or four times, trying to figure out what was wrong. Extra slash. I don't need that trim end. That's fine. Ugh. That is good. Nice full long path. Let's see if it can load the long path. It can't. So I still need that horrible nonsense. <laughs> I have no idea why. All right, that makes me feel better. We were so close, and we had to do all that anyway. All right, so bad. Okay, let's commit this stuff. All right, what do we have here? Fonts. Uh, did I? Right, right, remove the unneeded fonts. Okay, those are all the removals. That is all the removals. Embedded font loader. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We clean that up. That's fine. That's adding that in. Yes. All right, now let's see if we can simulate that crash again. Got a crash, got a crash. How does that font not have a font family? Where's that coming from? So we need to do what we were doing I wonder where that font's coming from. Does this have a content? Okay, so we have a text block. I'm glad we got that one thing fixed, but I want to fix this crash because I don't want to commit something with a bad crash, and I changed all this anyway. Are we even using this font family? It's never used. That's an easy fix. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> okay. All right, so repository, opening command prompt, get pool dash dash rebase. I always rebase. I like, I just like it. It's cleaner. You don't get those merges. All right, now I can push that thing up there. Let's, no, don't reload yet. Let's go to the speakers. Let's click on one of these. No crash, no crash. So excited. Guys, thanks for joining. This was a little painful here and there. But we've got UWP working. Yes, let's stop debugging. Let's push that up. I already did. I think this pull request might be ready. Thanks for enduring with me through all that. Um, I wonder, is David Ortnow still streaming? If so, we should raid him. Um, do you guys have any questions? Is there anything you guys want to talk more about? Anything you guys saw in my code that didn't make sense? Um, if not, while we're waiting, let's go raid David. I think I need to do that in my own chat, don't I? Uh, slash raid. No, oh, wrong command. Nope, I just want his... Any questions? Anything you guys want to talk about? If not, let's go join David and see what he's up to. Oops. There we go. I can type, I promise. I can't spell his last name, though. Still. All right. You guys ready? Eight viewers are ready to raid. Ten viewers are... Wow, I didn't realize I had that many people watching. All right, let's go raid him. Hey, David, he can't hear me. Can...
Can you guys still hear me? I'm curious. When I'm raiding, can you guys hear me?